Hope you're all still awake. Late Night Mega here. And, yeah, it's time to go to the fire stage. What is it with... I mean, this was PS2, but what is it with more modern Mega Man games and suddenly we have, like, really tough fire stages? Like, X7 had the really bad fire stage, and this has a really tough fire stage. And Mega Man 11 has a really tough fire stage. This music is sweet. So yeah, the theme of this stage is you're going to fall down. Yeah, we have downward auto-scrolling. Now the game is a little bit generous uh, with how far you can go above or below the screen, but it's not super generous. Like if you fall down and there isn't a platform coming up to catch you, you still probably fall into a pit and take a death. If you let the things push you up above where you can see, you'll just start taking damage. And you can still move around in that, and you st still have to like try to navigate your way to get back on screen. You're about to see some of that here. So strategy, use zero. Actually, this whole stage is kind of meant for zero. His double jump is invaluable here, especially if you like start falling and you don't know where a platform is going to be. A second jump can maybe save you. Yeah, you can see I'm taking a bunch of damage there. And there's an example of double jump not saving us. Okay. Uh, in my practice runs, this is the stage where I had the most game overs. You can probably imagine why. I feel like these just come... Well, maybe not this one. I think the second round of this, because yes, there is a second round of this. The second round is... faster. I just feel like it is. But yeah, the music is very high... a very hardcore, fast-paced type of music. It is perfect for this stage. The difficulty of this stage and some of the design behind this stage reminds me of Mega Man X6 stage design, and that's never a good thing. Yeah, this is my pick for the most difficult stage in the game. Burn Rooster isn't a complete pushover either. Yeah, this is not a place to go to first. Don't worry if you take damage as zero, because we'll have a mini-boss room after this. It's really easy, and it's really designed for zero, and it's really easy to recover health there. And there's the lasers. Uh, so first we're going to want to start with X and zero. However, this has this stage has what I'm going to call Duff McWhalen Syndrome, in the sense that we need to go through this stage three times in order to collect everything, and there's nothing you can do about it. So the first time I'm taking 0 and X for the X capsule, but you also need Axel, and you need 0, and you need to pick up a thing in this and then come back as 0. And here's that deglave and the big spinny attack we got. Look at how much of the screen this thing just covers. This is ridiculous. The spin attack will continue for a couple seconds unless you release the button early. Yeah, see, we got we got health back. And we're going to have some great uses for that later. Yeah, you can see how much it does with the regular zero. Alright. So my goal here with X and zero... Okay, this pit here... Here's an issue I have with X8. You fall really, really fast. Like, you won't be able to tell if you just fall straight down. Yeah, there's a pit there. First time playing it, you're going to die there. Because it's just going to come up so quickly, you have zero time to react. Look at how fast you fall. Really not good design. Fortunately, I know where the spike pits are. There's another one there. Yeah, so we fell through the first section, and now we have another falling section. 
I'll have another falling section after that. I mean, given the stage theme and the the story behind the stage, and it being a Maverick dump, it makes sense. Whoa, that was a lot closer than I intended it to be. We we'll just have to wall jump up here. The spikes are not forgiving at all on this game. Like, if you even breathe on the spikes, you die. Alright, so I don't really want speed and movement. But we need to pick this up anyway, so... Foot parts H. I guess I can now talk about. We've, we've collected enough. I can talk about. Uh, that is not where it was supposed to go. And talk about the uh, parts. I'm actually just going to go back. And I'm going to swap to Zero and Axel because there's nothing else I can get with Axe. And I need Axel, so I may as well go back and do that. And I will... I think I'm going to cut out the first section of the stage. This is already going to be a long video. So yeah, we're going to do that. Here we are right after that first mini-boss room. And you can kind of see there's a hole in the wall on the left. We're going to try to get to that. Axel, you can use his hover ability there to catch yourself. Best way of dealing with that, because if you try to climb down the sides, one slight slip up and you're dead. Anyways, I was saying something before. The bonus path is actually right here that we can't get to. We have to break that floor, but we do not have the... I told you, not forgiving at all. I was also pushing the dash button in the air. Okay, did not intend to die there. And if you switch characters in midair, you can't use their special ability. Well, that's also not what I intended to do. So yeah, Duff McWhalen Syndrome, we have to come back. We're actually going to do... Well, I'm not going to spoil the rest of the video yet. I had something that I was starting to talk about, and then I got distracted by what's on camera. Oh, another cool trick you can do here is when you start firing as Axel and you're sliding down a wall, you will stay in place. So that can also help you. Black Arrow. Homing weapon. Pretty good here. I mean, you could pick up a Prickle Barrier... The only problem with Prickle Barriers is the first time you use it, that's it. And I copied him with A-Trans, and now we have to go... Oh yeah, that hole in the wall that you might have noticed. Yeah, we have to have Axel for that. And copy that flying guy, and then go all the way back up. Fortunately, if you take a death, you will... You'll still have your A-Trans thing that you copied. Problem is, the next death I take is our last one, because I've taken too many deaths. So we actually have to make this climb back up. I've never actually been able to make this climb back up. Oh my gosh, what are you doing past gameplay me? Things are not working out as I wanted. Very well. Yeah, so we're going to go back to the lab. We're going to we're going to do something else here. I have a plan. Just so we don't run out of retries. It is kind of weird that we can't get more retries within a stage, but 
I mean, it is what it is. You're mostly just going to get medals, health pickups, and life refills. I guess I'm okay with that. Yeah, there's no sense in getting a prickle barrier. Oh, warning. Yeah, so sometimes randomly you'll get this uh, pop up when you go to the stage select, and it's an intermission. Intermission? Really? This game is starting to make as many puns as a Dragon Quest game. It's basically just a thing you can do to get some extra medals. I don't think there's anything significant you get from them. I also believe there's one for every stage. So I've gotten a couple of them already. Well, this is the first one in this run, but I've gotten one... I've seen one in the ice stage, and I've seen one in... There's a third stage. So yeah, Lair will also tell you about the enemies. So she does more enemies and bosses. Palette does more on special routes and hidden passages. They, neither of them will reveal everything. And Alia will do a mixture of both, but will do some things that are the same. So there'll be like some overlap with Alia. But then Alia will also have different things. Ooh, that was also much closer than I intended it to be. Yeah, so we're talking like Mega Man X6 levels of difficulty with this stage, and I'm not the biggest fan of it. I like the music, though. And copied that, and yeah, this lair gives you the hint about the DNA. Now we gotta go all the way back up. I will try to do this legitimately, but I won't fret too much if we take a death. It's getting through this thing again, because we can't just go up, because that's going to take us to the capsule. Ooh, that was so close. You do not want to be climbing up on the... Okay, well, let's use zeros. There, do that. Put that skill to the use. Also, those retry chips that we bought. The third one that we buy is actually a permanent retry chip. You'll see next time we go to the... we take a death. <laughs> yeah, we're going to take another death in this stage. <laughs> um... Okay, let's A-trans, and then what we have to do... The flying here is kind of weird, so you, like, start flying up... Oh, I do not want to fly in the spikes. Can I... It, it does not work at all how you would want it to. You basically press jump and press jump again to... Okay, I can fly headfirst into the spikes while I'm here. Can I... There we go. And once you're in this room, the only way out is through flight, so it's actually not going to deplete the last bit of A-trans. But it will as soon as you leave this room. So this could get interesting. Hey, Told you, interesting. Now we gotta go all the way back down. I do find it interesting, the concept of... Yeah, see how two... Three of them are green, like our retry chips normally are, and two are blue. So, blue ones are temporary. That third one we bought, I believe, is the one that becomes permanent. In my practice runs, I never bought retry chips. But just so we don't sit here and have to go through that first section again all day, because it's bad enough I'm going to have to go through it again when I come back here. Oh, yeah, because that's that's one of the things we have to get. We need zeros. Um, 
basically one of the rare metals that we're just picking up with Axel. We then need to come back with zero. I mean, I guess we could start with X and Axel, pick up what we need to as Axel, and get the capsule. And then come back and only have to come back a second time with zero to get that uh, spot where you break the floor. But so much of the stage is just designed for zero. Like, this challenge is totally designed for zero. Just slash the guys out of the air before they even hit the ground. And that's how you'll get, like, the best rank on this. And Zero is perfect for that because his whole slashing sequence makes it really easy to hit things. Oh, and we got the best. When you do the best, you get the purple metal there. If you had Palette, she would tell you that there's an extra route up above, which is kind of where the game is going to lead you first. But as you can see, those platforms are going down. You need Axel's hover. Ooh. And we have two guys. That shielded guy, you cannot break his shield like you normally would. You actually need Gravity Antonian's weapon to break through his shield. Weapon slash skill, depending on which character you're using. Yeah, it's like a super shield break weapon. Although it's weird because we've run into other security guards like that that have the shields that we can break. But then randomly you get the ones in this stage with the shield and you can't break them. And they really do not look any noticeably different to me. Yeah, another inconsistency. That's Mega Man X6 design for you. Once again, zero is going to be great here. The boxes with the... Yeah, you can see which ones are going to light up and explode and which ones are not. I should not have gone that way. I'm having issues. Yeah, I'm taking a ton of damage. I need zero alive, so let's try this as Axel. Axel's hover is also pretty good through here as well. And this section, yeah, this section of the platforms feel like they're moving, like, 50% faster. Oh. The target is resistant to heat and uses fire weapons. You don't say. Burn Rooster uses fire weapons. Yeah, there's no, like, official boss gate. You just keep falling until you get to this. And you can see he's doing whatever he's doing here. So he's a kicking rooster. That flaming mohawk is sweet, though. Are you being controlled by Sigma? I know that's not really a Mohawk. I, I don't I don't remember what that thing on top of Rooster's head is called. It's a flaming Mohawk here. And fortunately, there's no, like, falling into the lava and dying in this boss battle, which is very appreciated. You can see he gets a barrier, some sort of blue aura barrier thing up, but it doesn't actually protect him from damage. So I think what it does, I think it works like Flame Stag supposedly is supposed to work when Flame Stag went uh, all blue flame and... And he supposedly did more damage, but I didn't really notice it, it back in Mega Man X2. I think that's kind of the case here, is he just does more damage when he, when you don't break his aura. And see, there we broke it, so now he'll do slightly less. I think that's what's happening. That's what my guess is. 
having played through this several times and not... Like, because I can still damage him when he has... Yeah, watch out for his ground fire. Of course, the changing terrain is where this battle really starts getting difficult. Ouch. We do need to keep Zero alive. Well, we did not keep Zero alive. And his super move. He's going to create two flame pillars here. I really need Zero alive. I mean, I think, why do you need Zero alive? He's mostly a melee fighter, so he's best to attack from a distance with the weapon. Yeah, we got him. But the reason we need Zero alive is at this stage, a very unique concept. I don't know if this happened anywhere else in mainstream Mega Man. system has gone haywire. The magma has begun to flow backwards. The escape point is at the mouth of the volcano. Get moving. We defeated the Maverick, and we still have stage to go through. Yeah, you can you can totally die here. I mean, logically, this makes sense to have this sort of thing, but my gosh, this stage... Oh, and for some reason in this section, I don't know if it's like the shaking that's causing it, but Axel is not always, like, wall jumping off of these platforms. You kind of saw that a little bit there. And this is why I really wanted Zero alive, so I could double jump my way through this. Because I've never made it through here. See, like that, he wouldn't he wouldn't jump up, even though I was pressing the jump button, so I don't know if the shaking had something to do with it or whatnot. But now we have Zero. And you can see there's metals to pick up as you go. Although overall the climb up isn't that tough. Especially if you can double jump. So yeah, pretty unique concept, but very difficult in its uh, design. Jump up there, Zero. There we go. The section also lasts a lot longer than I feel like it probably should. I think I'll get some red metals along the way. Oh, we can hear the glowing silver metal. I guess that's what that is. Okay, and that platform just decided to give up on life. And there's our weapons we get. The Melt Creeper. That sounds so weird. And we can melt all the creepers now. All right, with that, we still have to go, now that we have the fire weapon, we can go back to... Actually, we can't go back to Burn Rooster because we still have to have another special ability. That, that super shield break thing we need. We need that to get the last rare metal as well as the hammer that we're about to get for zero. Or the hammer that we got for zero. The tea breaker is what it's called. Let's start getting some speedy recovery. Speed up their time recovering when they tag out. And actually, since this is... Yeah, there's tea breaker. It's a big hammer. But I don't have the other skill I need yet to get the thing. So we'll have to go back to Burn Rooster's stage a bit later. But uh, I'm going to drop a save. And I will see you guys next time.